We all know that for a small country, Holland has quite a few cultural and artistic traditions. Among the most famous are the great painters, Vermeer, Rembrandt and Vincent van Gogh. To this very day, they've inspired people from all over the world. And today, I get to meet a very interesting artist from the US, John Proctor, who was greatly influenced by the Impressionist movement of the 19th century. I'm Paul Brown. This is West International. The Hague is situated in the most populated province in the Netherlands. Located near the sea, it is close to one of the biggest harbours in the world and is also one of the world's most prominent providers of chemical products. It is also the political centre of the country, so the city could become a target for terrorist attacks. In this week's service item, we focus on the procedures to follow should a disaster or emergency situation occur. Our expats in the Vox Pops this week share Easter traditions from all over the world. Cecilia is off to the town hall for a heart-rendering and very special surprise item. But first, let's join Nicola at a school celebration where children from all cultures get to enjoy the taste of each other's cuisines. On this beautiful day, I'm at the American School of The Hague where they're holding their annual International Day. Amazingly, over 63 nationalities will be represented and there's going to be dance, music and, of course, food. And that's why today I'm not at home, but at school. So, Barbara, what is on the menu today? Well, this is a absolutely a special, special day for the children, and we have all kind of fun, easy-to-eat finger foods for the children from probably, I don't know, over 60 countries. So we've got beautiful desserts, we've got different savory dishes, uh -huh. and a lot of them we probably won't even recognize because we have so many exotic countries represented today. Excellent. Well, let's go and take a closer look, shall we? Oh, I'd we? love to. Let's go. This looks amazing, but who did all the cooking? Every single parent of the elementary school children brought in their dish, their favorite dish from their home country. Some children are like, mommy, please make this one, please. I want all my friends to know my favorite dish. And, and do the children know what to expect? Oh no, it'll be a total morning, Christmas morning, when all the special gifts are all laid out for the children to share. Fantastic, so I can't wait to see their faces when they come in. Indeed, it'll be great. Dennis, and Dennis, where do you come from? South Korea. From South Korea. And is this a, a typical outfit from South Korea? I must say, you look very smart indeed. Does everybody in Australia wear a hat like that? No, and this hat is for them, um, so then the flies go away ah. because they get scared. I love your hat. Is that a typical Swedish hat? No. No? I, I bought it in Leiden. Ah. That is a beautiful outfit. What do you like the most about living in Holland? It's yours. I like everything. That they had at American School of the Hay. The stroke waffles. Flowers. Sorry? But there is the American School of the Hay. Oh, you like the American School? The schools are nice. Okay, and what don't you like about living in Holland? Uh, it's cold. On the start, it was that I didn't want to move to Holland. No, not really. Uh, everything's good. Yeah. And uh, the weather. The weather. Everybody says the weather. Everything's nice. The thing I don't like about Holland is the smell of the cows. The smell of the cows. Don't you have smelly cows in Israel? No? And what do you think about an event like today? Well, you know, for the first week, uh, pretty amazing to just stumble into International Day. So it was really 
pretty special thing to, yeah. to see all the countries. And have you had a check out to see what your kids are eating? I, well, you know, I, uh, I, I brought mac and cheese, and so it's been fun to, uh, to look around and see all the different food. Well, you can see tables empty, no more children, the day is over. It was a great success and it was a lot of fun. So I'll see you next week. I'm just going to go and check if they've left me any brownies. Bye. They haven't. Well, Easter is a Christian um, feast for the uh, going up in heaven of Christ. From a religious sense, obviously, is, is the rising of Christ. But it's also an opportunity with the children and you try and celebrate the rebirth. I am religious, but I see religion in a different light. So I see it more like um, a celebration of the potential for life to change into something. I'm, I'm not sure, actually. I think you celebrate. Uh, it's just a public holiday anyway. It was never told to me as a child that this is a religious holiday and that's what we celebrate. To me, in my mind, it was an egg painting day. Holland is a country of few natural disasters. There are no heat waves, tornadoes or severe earthquakes, so we're lucky to be situated in a safe zone of the world. The biggest threat, however, comes from the many lakes, rivers and from the sea. In 1953, the province of Zeeland was hit by major flooding known as the Vaters Nodramp. This led to 1,800 fatalities and 100,000 people losing their homes. This disaster encouraged the Netherlands to build the Delta Werken, the Afslaut Dyke in the north, and many other works of unprecedented technological achievement. The Dutch are now world famous for their knowledge in water management. A specific risk in the Netherlands is uh, that 7 million people are living below sea level. Uh, when it comes to floodings, uh, there are special evacuation programs. Besides uh, floodings and severe weather conditions, there's always the risk of a terrorist attack. Uh, but this is the same risk as you find everywhere uh, else in the world. If you want to uh, know something about disaster and uh, uh, risks in this region, please uh, go to City Hall or go to uh, thehague.com and you can find the information that you want. There's also another website, uh, www.crisis.nl and uh, in Dutch www.denkvooruit. .nl, and you can also find some uh, practical information about what you should do when something occurs. When disaster strikes, rescue work is a collective effort of all the emergency services, including the fire brigade, police, medical teams, as well as political institutions. These professionals practice all year round to ensure they are fully prepared for any eventuality. The recent plane crash at Schiphol demonstrated the efficiency with which the emergency services respond to these situations, something that received positive acclaim all round. When something happens, of course, you hear the, the sound of the alarm. Uh, this alarm, you hear this uh, every first Monday of the month at noon. Uh, and in fact, that's uh, only a drill for people that they can hear the sound, they can recognize the sound. And when it's besides this first Monday on the, uh, of, of the month on noon, the best thing is to do, uh, uh, go inside, close uh, windows and doors, uh, put your television on, put your radio on, and when you don't have uh, electricity, because that's one of the disaster possibilities, uh, provide yourself with a, a battery-operated radio. And listen to 89.3 or in uh, Rotterdam Rijnmond at 89.0. And since 1986 there is a guideline from the EU that every country, when every second counts, uh, you call 112 and you will be provided by a police service, ambulance service or fire service within a few minutes. To me, I, I think it is a very nice period of the year. Uh, first of all, you do have the flowers coming up, so symbolizing the resurrection. For me, it's more or less, you know, to have a free day and to have a rest and uh, just to, you know, have some fun time with my family. My family aren't really religious, so we don't celebrate it in a religious way. We just more celebrate it in the fact that it's Easter and it's, it's a nice time to have family time together. So it's a moment to be actually thankful that we live and that we can appreciate that. It means for me the time celebrating when Christ uh, died and, and that for me is really the theme of Easter and renewing myself and, and trying to be better uh, during Easter time and beyond. Lisa and her husband from the US moved to the Netherlands last May without the assistance of a big company. 
Now, unfortunately, she encountered some rather unpleasant and bureaucratic surprises, both during and after moving here. But just as things were starting to look really grim, she got the help of a very special someone. Lisa, who do you want to surprise? I would like to surprise Martin Kuyper at the expat desk in The Hague. He has been my angel since I've been here. He really helped my husband and I navigate through the difficulties of establishing ourselves here. We, um, when we came over here, we moved ourselves here, so we didn't have a relocation company to help us with going through the process of all the bureaucracy and the paperwork yeah. that you have to work through. It's a lot of bureaucracy. It's a lot of bureaucracy, and not reading Dutch made it even more difficult. Um, it got to the point where my husband's company um, didn't pay the fee for us to be here in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we were had already gone through IND and done the registration, but the fee didn't get paid. And about six months after we were here, we got a letter from the Dutch government that said, you've got 28 days to leave the country. And so I was down at the expat desk with this Dutch document, and Martijn was interpreting it for me, and he took care of everything for me. He got me a new appointment with IND. He made sure that, that uh, everything was going to be walked through properly. And if it hadn't been for Martijn, we really wouldn't be here anymore. So you're going to be surprising him with this? Yes. I'm very excited to surprise him with wines from around the world. He also recently just got engaged, and so it's kind of a double surprise for him. And I'm really excited about saying thank you. So, are you ready to give this to him? I am. Let's go surprise him. Let's hope he's there. Do you see him? Nope. Hi, Martijn! Surprise! 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 <laughs> surprise, I'm good! Good to see you. This surprise is for you. Uh, uh, this is my sure. yes. This is my thank you to you for all of the help that you gave me, getting me settled here because you were uh, my angel. A rose hoofd noemen we dat in Nederlands. You don't hear that's not necessary. Yes, no. This is for you. Congratulations and congratulations on your engagement. You made my life so easy compared to how difficult it was. Do you still have your easy button? I still have the easy button. Where's your easy button? I love the easy button. <laughs> okay, that's the easy button. That was easy. Ah! Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You're a one. <laughs> Summertime, were you really surprised? I'm very, very much surprised. Yeah, I'm, it's quite warm now. Uh, <laughs> I'm very much surprised. Yeah, this is fun. So where are you getting married? Uh, we're going to get married in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. 25 Aww. July. Oh, yeah, that's looking fantastic. Forward to it. So can you tell us about Lisa's particular case? Uh, people come in and uh, completely get lost. The, the language problems, the, the amount of administration that is required, and it's our job, together with my colleagues, to guide people in this administration. Was it extreme? Well, you have to ask. You have to ask Lisa, and then yes, something, some things went wrong. But it's our job to to support them and, and to guide them through these uh, procedures. And I think it went well. After I get kicked out the of the country, the outcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was a typical Dutch uh, procedure, and, and uh, well, it, and the end was all well. I think you did your job well. Yeah, it was a challenging case. Well, enjoy your, your time, your wedding, and celebrating with good friends. And if you want to surprise a good friend or someone who helped you or someone who's getting married, let us know and log on to www.westinternational.nl. We'll see you next week. Uh, normally we start with Good Friday, where we, we do it from 3 o'clock on Good Friday. We have, I'm Catholic, so we have the kissing of the cross ceremony. We go to church, we pray, we don't eat uh, meat. In my country, it's a, it's a really big celebration and it starts from the Friday. So on Good Friday, we celebrate it by cooking a really traditional uh, Nigerian Creole dish made of coconut and beans, uh, with, served with fish. Uh, Easter Saturday is normally the time where we traditionally celebrate the end of Lent. So that's a kind of a time of celebration where we have a party. It seems like the country was divided into two. Those who um, who believe in God, who started to believe in God and decided to go in a church and follow the church tradition. And those from the Soviet past who are like me, raised in the atheist and um, just celebrate the springtime, but everybody's celebrating. 
I am the alpha and omega of my art. It starts with me and ends with me and everything in between. These are the words of the American painter John Proctor. So John, the, where are we? Do you live here? Okay, no, this is just what I call the gallery. Uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, uh, Pam Lakefold, has allowed me to, to use her home as, as a gallery. That's nice of her. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, shall we have a look at the paintings? After you. That's why we're here. <laughs> After you. Okay. It's clear to see that John is inspired by the Impressionist movement of the 1800s, and most of all from Van Gogh and Monet. His works include a wide variety of colorful, passionate, emotional, and intuitive paintings, and he seems to have a fondness for painting nature and landscapes, all of which have a personal story behind them. I always wonder about an artist, what inspires you to make a decision to paint something like this, for example? Well, with myself, it, it, it is always a personal. Uh, uh, paintings are very, very personal. And with the, with the Pancake House, uh, I've had a lot of good times there. Okay. And of course, to, to view this painting better, you should step back four times the diagonal. Right, so we're a bit close now. We are painting. a bit close. Because yes. I know it's very lively. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot going on from this distance. Yeah, right. Um, if you yeah. step back and allow the color to take form, mm. then you can enjoy it better. So, to get my creative juices flowing, John and I ventured outside to get inspired by Dutch nature and create a painting of our very own. Put it on? Yeah, just put oh, it on. Well. Okay, just put it on. Put a, put a, put a little, little bit more in here. A little bit more in here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really, really get it. Get, really get, get into get, it. Get, get into just, it. Okay. As in the old vernacular, get funky with it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, there's, so there's a, for you, there's always a story and a feeling behind it. There's every, a story and... To do. Exactly. Okay. And every painting I could paint this painting today, but tomorrow it would be different. It's quite spiritual, I suppose, in the way. You know, I, I, I always sort of almost categorize artists, uh, whether it be music or, or, or dance or painting or what have you, it, it seems to be about what comes out on the day. Exactly, those, those, those things, writing, mm. dance, music, this type of art is, is, is actually one and the same. They belong in the same family of expression. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. So, I mean, John, did art have anything to do with you deciding to move to Holland? No, absolutely not. I joined the United States Air Force in uh, 1972. Okay. They needed people in the Netherlands and that word, the Netherlands seemed to be awful Romantic. Okay. And that's how I ended up in, in, in Holland because I thought that name, the Netherlands, was yeah. romantic. I was here for a two year commitment. Yeah. Then two years turned into three and three turned into four. Happens to us and all. And the yeah. rest the rest is history. <laughs> what would you say it is about Holland uh, that, that inspires you for the subjects that you choose to paint? Well, I love the landscape. I love right. the, the beauty of its nature. Mm. And if one would just look very closely, mm. if they, would, they, they would see that. Dutch landscape reminds me very much of my own home state of North Carolina. I come from the eastern part, which is flat. Okay. Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it, about Holland? Because yeah. everyone always says it's so flat here, which suggests that it's boring. Um, and yet you, you as an artist find the beauty in, in, in the Netherlands as a country. So what is it about the landscape that you find so inspiring? When you look at, look at the polder area, the fields, and as you move back into the distance, things tend to fade into the horizon and take on almost a bluish shape. Okay. And, and, and that's what I, re I really enjoy. I can enjoy the nature. It has so much to offer. And the only thing one has to do yeah. is look. Yeah. So John, is, is, is this the, the, the sort of, um, you know, this outdoors life mm -hmm. and being, being able to paint and practice your art, is this the sort of life that you aspire to? I am doing something which I, I believe a uh, few people uh, are doing in their work, and that's doing what they really want to do. Yeah. There are a lot of people who have great jobs. Yeah. They make good money. Yeah. But they would prefer to do something else. Yeah. So, so this is this is what I love. I love doing. It's not about me. My art is not about even the art itself. It's about right. the spirit of the art. Right. That's what's important. That's the driving force. Right. You know what? I think that's a pretty good painting. For a short space of time, it's a great painting from that tree. It's a great impression of that tree. It's your impression. Excellent. Great. John, thank you very much for my foray into the world of art. You're very welcome, Paul. Okay, and on the subject of art and culture, let's take a look at this week's cultural agenda for you. If you're a fan of the golden oldies, 
then Golden Music Moments will give you that nostalgic feeling. There'll be performances of songs from the greatest musicians of the time, including Paul Anker, Cliff Richard and Connie Francis. Golden Music Moments 2 will have you swinging and jiving to the music of the original pop idols. There has always been a good healthcare system here in the Netherlands, but it can be confusing for those who do not speak the language. Bronevo Hospital has therefore decided to hold a meeting to give expats a chance to find out more about healthcare here. Doctors from the hospital will be hosting the meeting and will explain all you need to know. Although Bach's Matthias Passion was first seen in 1729, the work was first performed in 1870 in the Netherlands. It has become a tradition for a large orchestra and accompanying choir to perform this work around Easter time. The resident orchestra will delight you with their musical talent by performing selected pieces from Matthias Passion. Every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, the Disco Take Public Library in Delft holds an English reading afternoon for children in the youth section of their library. This is a perfect opportunity to get your kids excited about reading. They even organize reading days in Spanish and Turkish. Check out the website to keep track of the dates. To find out about these and other tips on going out and what's going on in your region, visit our website, www.westinternational.nl. Well, that's it for this week. Again, we know a little more about the country that we live in, about its cultural traditions, its dangers, and its beautiful but unpredictable nature. After seeing this week's service item, I feel better knowing that we're in safe hands. But don't forget to prepare yourself should a disaster or emergency situation occur. I also enjoyed this week's surprise item, something so imaginative and quite touching, and I call upon all of you out there to have a think about someone you'd like to surprise in an unusual or original way. I'll see you next week on West International. You are what you watch.